Welcome to Sakimori Research Lab of Universal Spirit. Thank you very much for your visit as always. In the previous 21st session, we deepened our understanding of how people who were reincarnated in Japan at the time received the impulse of Christ in Europe at an early stage in the AD era, as Steiner spoke in his lecture. Furthermore, we verified the fundamental cause of war through the common part in the recognition of the Russo-Japanese War in the Oomoto Divine Message and the spiritual background of the Russo-Japanese War revealed by Steiner. This time, we will discuss the second coming of Messiah and the rebirth of Messiah recorded in Tales of the Spiritual World. At the same time, we will also deepen our consideration of the relevance to the divine work of Oomoto. In Oomoto's God's program, it is recognized as a three-stage model of Oomoto, Japan, and the world from the law of miniature gods program that Oomoto is a miniature of Japan, and Japan is a miniature of the world. However, Anasaburo Degachi uses the old place names of Japan and the place names in Tales of the Spiritual World to explain the three-stage model, which is very difficult to understand. Therefore, here, I will explain it in a diagram for easy understanding. The Oomoto Divine Message states that God's programming is basically unknowable to humans. Therefore, with this as a basic premise, we hope that you will accept this as an assumption made by our laboratory at the present stage. The laboratory interprets the tales of the spiritual world as a three-stage structure. First, in the first stage, the events of God's world are described. Next, events similar to this God's world are depicted as events in the spiritual world as the second stage. Furthermore, it is said that the events that take place in the spirit world become phenomenal as events in the real world. This is the third stage. In other words, events in God's world occur in the spirit world, and events in the spirit world are phenomenalized as events in the real world. This is the basic structure of the three-stage divine program of God's world, the spiritual world and the real world. And in the tales of the spiritual world and the Oomoto divine message, it is stated that Kunito Kotachi no Makoto retreated to the northeast and became Ushitora no Kanjin. Toyokuma no Makoto then retreated to the southwest and became Hitsujisaru no Kanjin. The first stage deities therefore retreated to Crown Island and Shu's Island, the northeastern direction of Oomoto, and to Kami Island, the southwestern direction. The second stage deities retreated to Amta Asawake in the northeastern direction of Japan and to Kakai Island in the southwestern direction. The third stage of God retreated to the Japanese archipelago in the northeastern direction of the world and to Jerusalem in the southwestern direction. In earthly history, this state of affairs continued for 3,000 years. A simple diagram of the previous content can be seen in the diagram above. The first stage, the world of God, manifests in Oomoto, Ayabi, Japan. The second level, the world of spirit, manifests in the country of Japan. The third stage, the world of reality, manifests in the world. In Oomoto, the Ashitora no Kanjin, who had been in seclusion for 3,000 years, program med using this three-stage structure and put their program into action at the beginning of the 20th century. The deities that play a central role in this process are Kunito Kotachi no Makoto father, Toyokuma no Makoto mother and Susanu no Makoto son. The workings of this deity are very similar in activity to those of Osiris, Isis and Horus in Egyptian mythology. The father who retreated in the northeast direction is known in Buddhism as Yama, the judge of the underworld. The mother, who retired in the southwest direction, is called Zhuangmu in Chinese mythology. Her son, Susanu no Makoto, is active on earth in physical form as Mithraya Bodhisattva or saint. Thus, Shinto deities act as Buddhist bodhisattvas and Buddhas for 2,500 years. Incidentally, Anasaburo Degachi also referred to these father, mother and son deities as Mithraya of the earth, Mithraya of heaven and Mithraya of man. Having understood this structure, let's move on. Next, in Tales of the Spiritual World, 
the the returning messiah is particularly depicted in the conversations of the characters in volume 64, and the following is written in the preface of volume 64 about its content. This volume is a special edition that was orally narrated in a novelistic manner with modern Jerusalem as the background, and it greatly differs in taste from the other volumes. It is a dramatization of the second coming of the Savior, and whether or not this will actually be realized in the future is something that the narrator himself does not know. And then, it is recorded that Anasaburo Degachi said the following to a disciple who had read tales of the spiritual world nine times. You would have understood quite a bit if you read it nine times. Tales of the spiritual world is all about Japan. Even though it is about America and India, it is all about Japan. I have been deceiving believers until now. Of course, I don't think that all the content of Tales of the Spiritual World is about Japan. However, it is believed that Volume 64 is about Japan. And in that Volume 64, notable things are spoken of. Isn't Zion under the sun, or doesn't it mean a sunny place? The land under the sun is the kingdom of God. That kingdom of God is Takasago Island. Isn't it natural to welcome the Messiah from the kingdom of God? These words all mean Japan. The returning Messiah is believed to appear on Mount of Olives in Jerusalem when the world's last great pass reaches 99.9%. The Messiah has already been reborn at the foot of Oakfuse Mountain on Takasago Island. The meanings of rebirth and second coming are slightly different. In other words, the newborn Messiah and the second coming Messiah, the two Messiahs are spoken of. So, let's start by examining the rebirth of the Messiah. Regarding the rebirth of the Messiah, it was said that the Messiah has already been reborn at the foot of Oakfuse Mountain on Takasago Island. In the tales of the spiritual world, this Takasago Island means Japan, and the foot of Oakfuse Mountain refers to Oamoto in Ayabi. Therefore, it is understood that the reborn Messiah is already active in Ayabi with a physical body. Also, in the tales of the spiritual world, it is written as follows. Because of this, due to the plan of the God of celestial circulation, two messiahs, a strict God and a merciful God, have appeared on Takasago Island in the Far East, which has been called the Kingdom of God. Their lofty and profound love has become something very close and familiar to us, and it has become something that cannot be released from our daily lives. What a grateful and noble thing it is! You too, deeply understanding the true meaning of love, sincerely longing for the second coming of Christ, have overcome the barriers of nationality and religion and established a holy order. I feel that this is truly a great divine work for all the people of the world, and I can only feel grateful for the spirit of your congregation. The great God of great mercy and compassion is transforming the whole world on earth into a heavenly kingdom, and in order to give rest and glory to all people, he has carried out a 3,000-year God's program and has now opened a holy teaching on Takasago Island. And in preparation for his descent into this Jerusalem, which is the original mansion of the great God, he has given birth to the holy master of the merciful soul on earth, and has atoned for the sins of all people. On the other hand, the Bible says, And then at that time, people will see the Son of Man, me coming on a cloud with great power and glory. So when these things begin to happen, stand up and lift up your heads. Because your redemption is drawing near. So, what does this time of atonement mean? Steiner also spoke about the appearance of Christ in the etheric world as follows. The fact that the judge of human actions has been entrusted to Christ is linked to Christ's direct intervention in human destiny. People who gradually gain the ability to perceive Christ, who does not have a physical body, will see Christ intervening in the fate of humanity on earth. Thus, we have suggested something very important and essential in the present, namely the new appearance of Christ in the etheric body. We must not think of Christ's new appearance as being tied to a physical body. We have suggested that Christ in the etheric world appears on earth as a judge. Those who depicted the judgment after death against Christ suffering at Golgotha, the victorious Christ, Christ is the Lord of Karma, 
already had a premonition. They depicted or narrated the final judgment as something that would happen immediately. The final judgment actually began in the 20th century and continues until the end of the earth. The fact that the judgment begins from the 20th century is about the organization of karma. We have learned how important it is for humanity to rightly acknowledge faith, love, and hope in the face of this revelation in the present day. In other words, the reappearance of God should also mean the time for the settlement of human sins and karma. This is why the advent of the Savior and eschatology have been spoken of simultaneously since ancient times. Therefore, in preparation for this, it is believed that the Messiah, who has a physical body on earth to save the spirits of humanity, has been reborn, preaching his teachings and atoning for people's sins. In this sense, the returning Messiah is a God who is strict in divine law, like God of judgment, while the reborn Messiah is an entity that advocates for people's sins and mistakes in order to save them. In other words, it is the advocate, Parakletos. In fact, in the tales of the spiritual world, the following song is also sung. Look at the state of this world as a result of people tormenting me without knowing that I am the soul of the Messiah who saves the world. Furthermore, in his training in the cave of Amt Takakuma, Anasaburo Degachi met with the God of Judgment in the court of the ghost world. Regarding this, in the tales of the spiritual world, Anasaburo Degachi was told the following by the God of Judgment in a gentle tone. It's a lot of hard work, but start your training in the underworld. Those who become messiahs in the material and spiritual worlds must learn practical studies as messiahs. We would like to give you warm water to drink, but drinking water or hot water is forbidden during training. So, start your practice as soon as possible. Thus, Anasaburo Degachi acquired practical learning as a messiah of the material and spiritual worlds and later wrote down his experiences as the tales of the spiritual world as the teachings of Mithraya Bodhisattva for the salvation of all people. From the above, it can be understood that the reborn messiah refers to Anasaburo Degachi himself, who has been working as the advocate, Parakletos, the collective body of Bodhisattvas, Susanino Makoto, and Mithraya Bodhisattva. Next, regarding the Mount of Olives, where the, the returning Messiah is said to appear, it was written in the tales of the spiritual world that we are confident that the second coming of the Messiah will appear on this Mount of Olives in Jerusalem when the world has reached 99.9% .9 of its critical point. And, although I will omit the explanation here because it is long, according to the contents of the tales of the spiritual world, in the grand scheme of God's program, this Mount of Olives in Jerusalem refers to Amt Yatsuo in Ayabi in Kyoto. In Omoto, the Moroku Festival was held on March 3, 1928, and the advent of Moroku was declared. And on August 26, 1928 July 12 in the old calendar equals Anasaburo Degachi's birthday of the same year, the divine spirit of Kunito Kotachi no Makoto, who is secluded in Mount Ashawake in Hokkaido, was welcomed to Amt Yatsuo in Ayabi and the following waka poems were written. Kunito Kotachi no Makoto rises from Mount Ashawake and moves to the peak of Yatsuo. From the ridge of Mount Ashawake to Mount Yatsuo, the Golden Bridge continues. In other words, in Japan, which is a miniature of the world, Kunito Kotachi no Makoto, who is secluded in Ushitora Northeast, is being welcomed to Amt Yatsuo in Ayabi, which is the center of Japan. Furthermore, three years later, on October 18, 1931, Anasaburo Degachi said the following. At that time, I was in very poor health, so I decided to dictate without holding a pen myself, and have it transcribed while I was lying down. On the 20th, the demolition of the palace above Mpongu in Oomoto began. The destruction of the temple by the Japanese government in the first Oomoto incident. However, I had heard from God that the current one is a temporary shrine. It must be demolished and rebuilt. However, we couldn't demolish it from our side, and if we waited until it rotted, it would take a very long time, and if we demolished it ourselves, the believers wouldn't accept it. It was fortunate that the government was the one to demolish it, 
and I felt happy thinking that this was also God's plan. It's strange to say that I was happy to have the shrine destroyed, but I wasn't angry and was happy thinking that a more splendid shrine would be built sooner. The shrine at Ant Hangu in the Divine Garden of Oomoto was demolished during the first Oomoto incident in 1921. However, Anasaburo Degachi had been told by God that this shrine was temporary and needed to be rebuilt, so he felt that unnecessary effort had been saved. And in 1935, the following conversation was recorded. Question, is it written in the Divine Oracle that a shrine for Kunito Kotachi no Makoto will be erected on Gyatsuo? Answer, the shrine at Nthongu is that. It's because it's connected to the peak of Ampyatsuo. In other words, the enshrinement of the divine spirit of the earth ancestor god Kunito Kotachi no Makoto from Emp Ashawake in Hokkaido to the shrine at Emp Hangu in Oomoto in 1928 signifies the advent of the Messiah on Emp Yatsuo in Ayabi. From this, it can be inferred that the Messiah who will return to the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem when the time reaches 99.9%, .9%, which was recorded in Volume 64 of Tales of the Spiritual World in 1923, refers to the return to empty Yatsuo five years later in 1928. He then speculates that the structure of God's program in the 20th century was as follows. As a first step, the events of God's world are phenomenalized as events in Oomoto. In Oomoto, the gods that had been hidden on three islands, Crown Island, Shu's Island and Kami Island were released by the activities of Anasaburo Degachi and his team and dedicated to shrines within Oomoto. This meant that the first stage of the divine world was unsealed. Thus, it can be assumed that the 3,000-year divine program was initiated. The second stage is then the program of the spirit world. It manifests itself as events within Japan. The deity of M.T. Ashawake was brought by Anasaburo Degachi to M.T. Yatsuo in Kyoto Prefecture and consecrated at the Palace of M.T. Hangu in Oomoto. This meant that the seal of the deity of the northeastern direction of Japan was unsealed. Thus, it can be assumed that the second stage of the spiritual world's divine activity was initiated. In the third stage, the events in the second stage manifested themselves as world events six years later. This is the event described in episode 17. It is then assumed that at this time, the seal of God, which had moved from Jerusalem to Japan and was in hiding, was broken. This means that King Yama, the judge of karma in the east, will be restored as the presiding deity of the earth. In other words, in anthroposophy, it would mean the second coming of Christ. In this way, Oomoto functioned as a microcosm of Japan. Therefore, the events that took place in Oomoto likewise took place within Japan. Furthermore, Japan functioned as a microcosm of the world. Therefore, the same events that took place in Japan by the Japanese government were likewise taken place in Japan by the rest of the world. And Anasaburo Degachi knew all about this divine program from the very beginning. That is why Anasaburo Degachi prophesied the suppression of Oomoto in advance. He also prophesied everything about the defeat of Japan and the occupation by the Allied forces. He also prophesied the second coming of the Messiah and wrote it down in the tales of the spiritual world. Let us examine this in more detail. In this first phase, Anasaburo Degachi has been misunderstood by some Oomoto followers as an obstacle to the now Degachi founder. As a result, his book manuscripts were burnt and his life was threatened, so he temporarily left Oomoto to train and qualify as a priest in another shrine. He also traveled to Mongolia to proselytize, where he was hailed as the second coming of Genghis Khan, but was taken prisoner by local opposition. However, just before his execution by gunshot, the gun went off and the execution was postponed, during which time he was rescued by embassy personnel and returned to Japan. Thus, it is said that this is because the Susanoo Makoto in Shinto plays the role of settling the sins of mankind. However, it also implies Rudolf Steiner's perception that Mithraya will follow the same pattern of destiny as Christ. In other words, the first stage, Anasaburo Degachi's destiny, meant the pattern of Christ's passion. Next comes the second stage. 
In Oomoto, Anasaburo Degachi offered the Kunito Kotachi no Makoto of M. Ashawake in Hokkaido to M. Yatsuo in Ayabi. This means that the Japanese Kunito Kotachi no Makoto has descended to M. Yatsuo. In the first phase, Anasaburo Degachi was persecuted in Oomoto and temporarily left Oomoto. In line with this Oomoto pattern, in the second phase, Oomoto's activities were misinterpreted by the government as an anti government movement. As a result, Oomoto was persecuted by the government, Anasaburo Degachi and Oomoto cadres were jailed, their facilities were thoroughly destroyed and their land confiscated. Thus, in the second phase, the second Oomoto incident occurred. This signaled the fulfillment of the biblical portents of the coming. This was followed by the third stage. As already explained in episode 17, what happened in Oomoto happened exactly six years later as an event in Japan. Just as Oomoto was persecuted in the second phase, Japan was bombed by the Allied forces. Then the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, prisoners of war were taken on the continent, the war was lost and the Japanese land was occupied by the Allied forces. This is the conclusion of the third phase. And it meant the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy of the coming of Christ. In other words, it is assumed that the defeat and occupation of Japan led to the second coming of Christ in the etheric world. Thus, it can be assumed that God's program was fully accomplished in three stages. In the first stage, the passion of Anasaburo Degachi, in the second stage, the second Oomoto incident, and in the third stage, the defeat in the Second World War. And that is exactly what Anasaburo Degachi prophesied in Tales of the Spiritual World. The conversation has deviated significantly, so let's get back to the point. Considering the above discussion, if we read the content of the reborn Messiah and the second coming of the Messiah, which are intensively recorded as a character's dialogue in the excerpted Tales of the Spiritual World, Volume 64, as about Anasaburo Degachi and Kunito Kotachi no Makoto, I think its meaning can be clearly understood. In a world of perpetual darkness like today, the way religion and politics have been done up to now is no good, so we are waiting for the second coming of the great saint, the Messiah. Even in the Bible, it is clearly stated that we, the Jewish people, possess the divine right to rule the world. Therefore, we are confident that this prophecy should be realized. However, this world cannot be peaceful without the protection of God. Therefore, unless a superhuman great man, namely the Messiah, appears, nothing can be done. That's why we believe in God, love God, and act according to God's will in everything. I don't know what kind of demon you are, but are you going to interfere with our faith? The world dominated by evil spirits is a thing of the past. Today, we are already approaching the time of the second coming of the Messiah, so it's not the time for evil spirits to come out and show off. Even Takasago Island is still treating the teachings of our faith, Rupbaha, and its believers as superstitious, adding all kinds of oppression and interference, even treating the great saint as an evil spirit, and the people from top to bottom are all in a rebellious attitude. However, I firmly believe that this will be resolved by the power of time. When the Messiah descends to the Holy Land on a cloud, any wise scholar or evil person will hide their shadow like a star in front of the sun, and will surely kneel under the Messiah's knee. It's just a little patience for now. The Messiah has already been born in a certain holy place and is preparing for various things, so it won't be long. However, the Messiah is now encountering the suffering of the cross for the sake of all people, but soon he will appear like a lightning bolt flashing from the eastern sky to the western sky. I am here as a precursor to the second coming of the Messiah. I believe that the Messiah and the Emperor are all prepared on Takasago Island, and have been preserved for the world of today from thousands of years ago. I think the era of the benevolent God, who rules one heaven, one earth, and one Lord is already approaching. However, I think that until then, a big pass will inevitably appear in the world. The great God of great mercy and compassion has executed God's program for 3,000 years to make the whole world a heavenly pure land and to give rest and glory to all people, 
and now has opened the teaching on Takasago Island. And as a preparation for the descent to Jerusalem, the original mansion of the great God, the Holy Master of the Merciful Soul was sent down, and it was decided to atone for the sins of all people. The advent of the Messiah, the second coming of Christ, and the fulfillment of Mithraya's divine government, although the names may change, I think they essentially mean the same thing. Such a joyous world is all part of God's program, but a saint must appear to serve in that divine work. In this way, I think you can understand how strongly Anasaburo Degachi, who wrote this, was conscious of the second coming of the Messiah in 1923. And by the advent of Mithraya and the welcoming of the divine spirit of Kunito Kotachi no Makoto from Mount Ashawake to Emtiyatsuo in Kyoto, the divine spirits of the reborn Messiah equals Anasaburo Degachi and the second coming Messiah equals Kunito Kotachi no Makoto were gathered. This means a state where Christ is permeating Mithraya Bodhisattva, and it also matches the recognition of anthroposophy. However, Anasaburo Degachi explains Mithraya as heaven's Mithraya, earth's Mithraya, and man's Mithraya, and speaks of this trinity of gods as King Mithraya. There are difficult parts to interpret, but if you interpret the work of the trinity of heaven, earth, and man, father, mother, and child as King Mithraya, I think you can think roughly as follows. Father, Earth's Mithraya. Earth ancestor God Kunito Kotachi no Makoto. Mother, Heaven's Mithraya. Toyokumanu no Makoto. Child, Man's Mithraya. Susanu no Makoto equals Anasaburo. Finally, let's look back at Rudolf Steiner's prophecy about the recognition of Mithraya Bodhisattva, who was active at the beginning of the 20th century. Assuming that Jeshu ben Pandira, who was stoned to death about a century before the appearance of Christ in Palestine, has been reincarnated in the present day and has taught the appearance of Christ, that Christ must not be the physical Christ, but must appear dressed in ether. Just like when he appeared to Paul on the outskirts of Damascus. And we can recognize Jeshu ben Pandira, who has been reborn at this point. But what is important is that we learn that Christ will appear in our time from the existence that will someday become Mithraya Buddha. In other words, it is about finding the existence of the new Essenes. And from the considerations so far, the new Essenes should undoubtedly be considered the Oomoto of that time. Furthermore, he spoke about the time when people would start to see the appearance of Christ in the etheric world as follows. The first signs of this soul power will be noticed relatively quickly within each individual soul. By the mid-1930s, these signs will be clearly shown. It's roughly between 1930 and 1940. 1933, 1935, and 1937 will be particularly important. Special abilities will appear in humans as natural qualities. A major change will occur, and the prophecies of the Bible will be fulfilled. Two years before 1930, in 1928, Anasaburo Degachi declared the birth of Moroku, and the Oomoto held the Moroku Festival, and he ascended in 1948. March 3, 1928 – 56 years and 7 months old declaration of Moroku's birth. January 19, 1948 – 76 years and 5 months old ascension. In this way, the period when Anasaburo Degachi is said to have acted as Moroku almost coincides with the period from 1930 to 1940 when Steiner was seeing Christ existing in the etheric dimension. Also, Steiner said the following. I would like you to confirm the content of my talk not because I said it, but by comparing it with history and especially your own experience. In an age of knowledge like today, it is not appropriate to appeal to faith. I would like you to scrutinize my talk through your intellectual thinking ability. Once again, I repeat, in the 20th century, the Bodhisattva will not let someone tell him that he is the future Mithraya Buddha, but will stand before the world with the power of his own words. As these words suggest, the more you confirm and verify Steiner's words in light of history and especially your own experience, the more you can understand that the characteristics of the Mithraya Bodhisattva prophesied by Steiner coincide with Anasaburo Degachi in many respects. 
This is also proven by the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus Christ in the Gospels, as we have previously examined, by the following two historical facts. Signs of the Coming The stones that are piled up will crumble so much that not one will be left. Before all these things happen, people will lay hands on you and persecute you. December 8, 1935, the second Oamoto incident broke out. The Coming Those who are in the city must leave. Those who are in the country must not enter. December 8, 1941, the outbreak of the Pacific War. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. August 15, 1945, the end of the war and the occupation of Japan by the Allied forces. When considered in this way, the prophecy of Christ's second coming can be thought to have formally begun around 1935 and to have been fulfilled by around 1945. Of course, it is easy to dismiss this lightly, and it is a matter that should be left to each individual's free thinking. However, Rudolf Steiner should have also said the following. Even if one dies without being able to see the etheric form of Christ, those who understood Christ in the physical world can see the form of Christ after death. Those who have distanced themselves from spiritual life and did not understand Christ will not see Christ, and they must wait for the next reincarnation to gain that understanding. In episode 22, we briefly examined Oamoto's perception of God's program. We also examined the existence of the reborn Messiah and the second coming Messiah of the tales of the spiritual world. This also helped us to further understand why Steiner's prediction of Mithraea and the new Essenes in the 20th century could be considered to be Anasaburo Degachi and Oamoto. In the next episode, episode 23, we will look more deeply into what Steiner has been saying about the second crucifixion of Christ and the second coming of Christ. This is because, in the Oamoto divine message, this could be spoken of in the theistic language of the second heavenly rock door closing and the second heavenly rock door opening. Because I believe that by contrasting these two words, we can understand the connection between the Bible and Japanese mythology. Thank you very much for watching to the end. We look forward to your continued support.